In my intro video, I've mentioned that one of the advantages with Hibernate is that it supports standard JP annotations. And by using annotations, you can actually get rid of this mapping file that tries to map the persistent class with the relational database table. And we'll see how it's done. In fact, I already have the code ready. I just have to uncomment it. So inside my persistent class, I'm going to uncomment these three lines. And if you notice, we have an error here. We have support for these annotations from a couple of packages. One is from the Java X persistence and the other is from the Hibernate. So which one should I use? Can you make a guess? Obviously it's going to be Java X persistence. That's because, let me do Control Shift O to import the class files. So that's because, as I've already mentioned, these are standard JP annotations as well. So tomorrow at later point of time, if you'd like to switch to a different ORM tool that also supports JP annotations, then it's easier for you to switch. If you use Hibernate specific annotations, then you may face certain challenges while trying for alternatives. So here we have annotations and these are pretty much self-explanatory. In this uh, mapping file, we have the class tag. So in here, we have add the rate entity tag. Now if you're used to enterprise Java beans, this is the entity bean. And by default, the table that's going to correspond to this entity bean is going to be with the name employee. Unless you explicitly specify it with another annotation at the right table. We're going to explore rest of the annotations involved in coming videos for sure, but I would like to keep this video very simple. So we also have a couple of fields along with the identifier. So we do have the ID field and along with that I've used these couple of annotations. One is to mention that this field is the identifier which will be the primary key. And just as we specified a generator here, we do have the generator here as well. And whatever the options that you can provide in here can go in here as well. Pretty much similar. And you don't have to explicitly mention annotations in here to tell Hibernate that these are also the fields in the database. Hibernate can figure it out automatically and would create columns accordingly. So now guess what? By introducing all these annotations, I can literally get rid of this file altogether. It's not mandatory that you need to delete this file. We can use both if needed. But I see no point in using XML document and I'm not sure if I would ever use an XML document for mapping. We're going to be using annotations in our examples unless I feel there's a real need to talk about some of the tags involved in the XML document. So for now, I'm going to get rid of this. So let's delete it. And as a next step, if you remember, in our config file, we have this set and is pointing to the mapping XML file. So we need to get rid of this. Let me just comment this out. And instead activate this. So I have the same tag mapping, but this time instead of saying a resource like an XML document or properties file, I said it's going to be a class file and I would point to the persistent class and you need to provide the complete package. And I'm going to copy this and use the same in our test.java as well. But this time I'm not going to add a resource. Guess what? I'm going to add a class add annotated class is what I'm going to use inside which I would mention the class file and then dot class as simple as that. Now before I run the program let me show you that I have deleted the table beforehand so there is no table of employee. Now let me run this program and we'll see it get we'll see it taking effect and sure enough these two queries were executed and same thing got reflected in database as well. So annotations are pretty intuitive to programmers to code because right when you're defining your fields a programmer can also take care of 
how they're going to be represented in database as well. So it's like more natural and intuitive way to write a program. And also you get rid of all the all the mess with the XML documents. So that's one of the advantages. Also moreover, we have a lot of tools that would help generate these entity classes from an existing database. So in case if you're not using Hibernate before, but you already have a database, then you can still start with Hibernate and you can use these tools to generate these entity classes from the database like you do the reverse engineering and uh, you can and you can get your work going we're going to actually see an example of the same as well in future videos but one disadvantage though with annotation is that if there is any change that you introduce in the mapping XML document then you don't have to rebuild the entire application but if you have any changes that needs to be incorporated as part of annotations then you have to rebuild the application because we need the dot class file with those annotations reflected. Not really a big concern and I think uh, annotations is definitely a better alternative. But maybe if you're using earlier versions of Hibernate and you were already using these XML documents, it may be a little bit of an effort to switch to annotations. It may not be as smooth, but still it's possible and there are tools out there to help you out with the same. So with this I think we have a fair understanding of Hibernate. I think this is a good start as well and we have a lot of exciting concepts in coming videos. So stay tuned.